My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Before I begin, I just want to say what a delight it is to be able to see you this morning and to welcome you. It's been so strange these past few weeks to preach to empty pews. Uh, so it's lovely to be able to see you, to be with you, and to share in this time together. I want you to know you're all very important to us. As with all journeys, spiritual life is marked by periods of extraordinary highs and great lows. Just as quickly as we seem to gain new insight or even experience a transcendent, we find ourselves plunged into uncertainty and doubt. For many, this can be discouraging. Why is it that God seems to lift us to new heights only to leave us dangling more uncertain than when we began our spiritual quest? This past week was one of those weeks whereby I felt uncertain about where God was leading me. It was a week of doubt, discouragement, and uncertainty. A part of me wanted to simply give up. I kept asking myself as to why I keep trying when nothing seems to work. Now before I alarm you too much, I ought to say this isn't the first time I felt like this. Over the years I've come to experience a spiritual journey is marked by difficult moments as well as times of peace. After every trial, I seem to gain new insight and a deeper understanding of what God might have planned in my life. I've also come to learn that I need to lean into the difficult moments and not flee from them. The trial and tribulations are the times, as the scriptures frequently suggest, when God purifies us as one refines silver and gold. While I may not like to walk through the dark nights, I know I must, for new life is born from trial and tribulation. Theologically speaking, we Christians would call this experience the Paschal Mystery. All of us at several points in our lives will suffer and experience death and loss. Yet our faith reminds us that there will always be resurrection. We Christians neither seek suffering, nor do we run away from it, but rather we embrace it, knowing full well that through the cross we shall find life. Now you might wonder what all this has to do with the readings that we heard proclaimed today. At first glance, the scriptures Scripture lessons seem to suggest very little about suffering and death. Rather, both the first reading and the gospel seem to be about call and discipleship. And in fact, that is what most commentators will say that these readings are about today. Yet as I reflected upon the gospel, I couldn't help but notice the discouragement the disciples felt when Jesus told them to cast their nets out into the deep. The fishermen spent all night trying to catch fish and with little success. Now for this, for us, this may not seem like a big deal. Anyone who has gone fishing knows that the sport demands great patience. You can spend a great while before you catch a fish. However, the men Jesus was speaking to depended upon the catch for their lives. It was their very living. To spend an entire night fishing to find their nets empty would have been completely devastating and would have left the men in despair. What are they going to feed their families? What are they going to sell to market to earn a living? Yet in their despair, 
Jesus, Jesus orders the fishers to cast their net out into the deep. Well, most readers of this story quickly read on to hear the joyful result of their casting. I think we need to pause and consider Jesus' command. It is significant. In fact, I think it is the actual point of the story. It is a message for us. Cast your nets out into the deep. This story is allegorical, and we ought not to read it too literally. This is not simply a story of call and discipleship, nor is it the tale of the church's vocation to go out into the mission fields and make disciples. Rather, it is a story by which Jesus pushes his disciples and us, and this is important, it's also to us, to let go of all our disappointments, fears, anxieties, and to give ourselves totally and completely to God, trusting that God will do what God will do. Cast your nets out into the deep. Jesus is forcing us not simply to focus on the goal or the end of our journey, but to enter into the present moment. Like the disciples, we may feel discouraged. Perhaps you felt like you've tried to live your life well, only to find yourself with nothing, or your life in total chaos, filled with doubt and uncertainty. Or maybe you feel like you've done everything you can to help others, yet nothing seems to work. Maybe you've even felt like you prayed each day and God seems utterly silent, distant from you, and you wonder what the point is of it all. Then go out into the deep. By trusting Jesus and casting our nets out into the deep, our hearts and minds are not focused on the end result but are in the present moment. We spend all our lives worrying about tomorrow and investing all our time trying to achieve what we think God wants us to achieve, that we close ourselves off to the possibilities that God has for us. We want things to go the way we want them to go, rather, then be open to the extraordinary things God has in store for us. Jesus' command to cast out into the deep was not a message just for the disciples of his day, but a call for us as well. If you wish to experience life and to its fullness, then relinquish all you have, all your wants and desires, all your fears and anxieties, and give yourself to God and God's people. Don't let your faith and spirituality be a surface experience, a rout repetition of prayers and rituals, but embrace it fully. Delve deeply, deeply, into the life of faith and spirituality with your heart open to the extraordinary things God may do in your life. Commit yourselves to serving others, particularly those who are in most need of God's love and grace. Break open the scriptures daily and seriously contemplate and study the word of God. Dedicate time each day to prayer and meditation and allow the work, the word to work deep within you. Don't just stand on the shore of the sea of faith, but delve into a life of deep prayer and spirituality. You might be amazed what God will do. Now, will things all go well and smooth? 
Most likely not, and I will be entirely frank with you, they won't. <laughs> I found this so often in my life. If you cast out your net into the deep, you will struggle with the demands and challenges of the life of faith. The weight of the net will pull you in ways you've never experienced before. You will even find yourself exhausted by the experience, worn down by the ways of your spiritual journey. And the challenge will pull you further and further. Still, cast your net out into the deep. You might just be surprised what God might do. In a few weeks, we as a parish will once again meet to review and consider our ministry. We will look back on the year past and see the fruit of our labor. We will also look ahead and discern God's call for us as a faith community. As we do, let us cast out our net into the deep. This is not a time for us to remain locked into the ways of, that make us feel comfortable, to doing things as we've always done them. No, this is a time to let go and cast out into the deep to see what God can do through us if we are willing to be guided by God. My friends, this is a season of renewal for us. We've journeyed through a long, dark night, a pandemic, and the challenges it has imposed upon us. Many of us are worn, tired, and lonely. We miss the way things were and yearn for meaning and purpose. But let us not look to the past, to the way things were. But let us cast out to the deep, open to what God has in store for us. We might just be amazed if we do. Amen.